Well, this is an electronics fan, and I'm definitely getting into something that's off the wall. This control for my heater has decided it doesn't want to work. And uh, I have no idea if... I have no idea if I can do anything with this. Oh. So, um, but I thought, why not take a peek and see? When I played with it, I tested. There's a relay that, that they that controls the heat, fan, the heating system. Well, there's more than one. There's a a relay for each of the speeds also. But there's a primary relay that supplies power to the system, and then you can then tell it to run the different speeds. Which again, a relay, which is one of the things I don't understand. If this switch is bad and it's how it's behaving, why? One of the reasons you do relays in a system is because uh, you don't want to overstress you don't want to overstress um, I think the, the contacts. You don't want to overstress the contacts um, in uh, you know if it's plastic. I love how they do this. You've got this ribbon cable. Um, can I do this without taking it all apart? Because I don't know if I'm going to... Oh, what the heck, let's see if I can. So, anyway. One of the ways you try to uh, make something last longer, when, for instance, you're controlling something that draws a lot of current, ew, and, uh, oh, all right, fine. That means I'm going to have fun putting it back together, which probably means I'm going to have to pull that plastic cover sheet off so I can... So I can't reach in there. Come on. So anyway, so you've got something that draws a lot of current. You can put a really beefy switch in there. Or you can put a relay in and then control the relay with a, with a, a lower current switch. So, uh, you know, I, I'm not sure what the the, the uh, economics is. You know, how do they decide what makes more sense? But you do often see, well, actually it makes sense. Say, take for instance your car. When you turn your ignition to the starting position, the switch in your ignition... Yeah, the connection in your ignition switch that activates the starter isn't um, handling all that that massive amount of current that the starter is demanding. So there's two advantages to that. Number one, the switch on the dash can be a lot less bulky, and uh, the wiring going to it can be a lot thinner. Those are both two pluses, and then that switch actually connects to a solenoid or a relay, depending on the design. So, for instance, you have a Ford. You have a relay, or used to. You have a relay that then activates the solenoid um, on the starter. Now, the solenoid, the solenoid is a magnetic coil with a metal, a metal pole piece that gets, once you act, this is the coil, you fire the coil, the coil and it draws the metal pole piece in to pull something, make something happen. In the case of a, a starter, when the solenoid is activated, it'll do two things. It actually moves an arm to engage the uh, gears, the, the gear teeth in this, uh, for, um, yeah. There's a gear on the end of the, in, uh, on the starter, and there's an arm attached to it. And when the solenoid kicks in, this is the solenoid and this is the arm, it drives the teeth of that gear into your flywheel, but then when the solenoid pulls back, it also hits a switch, which activates the motor. That's a lot of stuff going on. So, so you actually have three steps 
uh, in this process. You've got your ignition switch, which is a low current. You've got a, a relay, which is higher current. Then you've got the solenoid in the starter, which is even higher current. So in that scenario, you've got three different stages uh, of or or size connectors that are doing different things to make that function. And I think the the, the goal. Uh, for instance, a lot, a lot of GMs, the uh, the ignition switch actually is connected directly to the solenoid. So you've got this small wire going down to the solenoid, and you've got this you know big switch inside the starter, which makes it work. Uh, so in that case, the heavy-duty wires just go from the battery to the starter, and so all that heavy-duty current is actually in, uh, handled by the starter itself. I'm wandering way far afield, and I don't know if I'm making sense. But anyway, so the reason they do that, though, is, again, you're looking at cost, you're also looking at longe longevity. <clears throat> you can put a heavy-duty switch in that starter, and that will keep, um, that will keep the switch on the dash lasting a lot longer, at least hopefully. That's not working. Uh, hmm. Okay, there we are, there's my screw. So anyway, so what they've done is these switches are actually controlling relays. And I'm, I'm assuming the relays are closer to the heater, so the higher current wiring just runs straight to the heater and then doesn't go up to the dash and then to the heater. So I'm assuming that's why they did that, uh, but I don't know. Let's see. I'm not a desi automotive designer. Come back here. I'm not an automotive designer. Um, really? Um, interesting. Okay, that's that display. Now, I don't know what, what's, what's, what's going on. It doesn't want to come. I don't really like to force things. I don't know. Oh, I think that's catching there. Okay. Yeah, maybe. Uh, if you don't have a spring hook, these things are very handy. And I really wish I'd had my... I, there's There are two types of spring hooks. There's this is a pusher, and there's a pull. And I wish I'd bought the pull version of this as well as the pusher. At the time, I thought I, I could use this for both, but you really can't. You need both. Although, it, this works for something like this, but... Um, oh. Okay. Interesting. They did not make this easy. Because um, they've got a cable going from the switch to the circuit board. And it doesn't really want to cooperate. Come on. Let's go. Really? So, well, this isn't behaving very well. I don't know. Um, oh. Ah, yes. There are, okay. I don't know if I have anything to reach down in there. I know that's metric. Um, all right, so one of the th problems I've got right now is that, okay, they have nuts in here securing those switches, which is why I couldn't get them to come out. So we have to persuade those to come out. 
So anyway, back to my puzzlement. These switches should be handling relatively low current. Because uh, it doesn't guarantee that they won't malfunction, which apparently they're this way. Based on what I'm seeing, it looks like it has. We'll see. Um, this is another handy little tool, these little forcep thingies. And they also have a latch so that you can hang on to stuff when that's when that makes sense to, to do that. Alright, now are we going to cooperate? Come on. There's that. Okay. No. This is not fun. Um, you get one side to come up, and the other side decides it doesn't want to stay up. It wants to go. Come on. Ooh, are we up? Are we going to come? Good. Let's see. Uh-huh. Now, can we get you to come up? So, one of the things you got to do, this, this is completely unfamiliar to me. I've never taken one of these apart. Um, and you really have to pay attention to all the things that are connected because uh, you could break something that you don't want to break. Oh, looks like there's a cable there. Um, and uh, I don't know what's going on there. So, what are we doing? Huh. Love the way they do things. So everything's coming apart right now, except that this part seems to not want to go. Oh, wait, wait. Ooh. Okay. That switch is free. Oh, all right. The switches were my problem. Okay. Um, and let's persuade this to come off. I didn't notice that little wire there. Gentle is the name of the game when you're dealing with this kind of stuff uh, because you really don't want to damage it. So, this is the one I think is having problems. Oh, looks like a digital control. Lovely. That's interesting. Well, interesting. It looks like they've got um, hmm. Well, well, well. We've got a little chip up there. Not quite sure what. Oh, that that. Oh, okay, that drives the display. Okay, fine. What's all of this stuff though? So this only has three wires coming out of here, and this has a bunch of different uh, bunch of different functions. Heck, let's look at the front of this. Um, there I turn it over. You've got rear, low, medium one, medium two, and high. And of course off. So you've got one, two, three, four, five functions. And you've got three wires. So this is doing, about making a variety of different connections internally to make that send the right signals, apparently. Well, let's see. This is looking less and less likely that I'm going to be able to fix this, but I'm in this far. Let's 
fire up some heat, um, which I didn't think to do beforehand. Should have. Um, there we go. I'm hoping my solder wick does the job. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. Um, let's see. It's interesting how this is the uh, assembly for your primary heater fan control. And that looks a whole lot different and a whole lot beefier than this thing over here. Um, this actually has to do with the rear heater in the van. And um, um, so a lot of the well the primary controls for this are actually above your head on the ceiling uh, to the back right by the back by the back door um, hmm I don't really want to solder all that all I really want to do is I got to get these four and these three. Yeah, it's interesting. They've got um, they've got all these different connections. One, two. They got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven connectors sticking out here, but they've cut off all but three. It's very interesting to see how manufacturers do things. And I'm assuming they did that because uh, this switch, this switch right here, I'm assuming can do can be used in a lot of different things and all you have to do is just supply uh, the right connections depending on the application and they all have to stock one, one type of switch. Now this is uh, probably a far cry from how my 99 was set up. Um, Uh, I bet that was more mechanical. This is a 2004. It's amazing how much things changed in just a few years. Um, the uh, actual controls for the, uh, the, the the vents and things that was strictly mechanical, and uh, that um, was a problem area. The, uh, I don't know if it's, if it's a lubricant or what, but the, um, as it aged, that wanted to work far less well than it should have, unfortunately. Um, yeah, I guess I'm wondering if I should just do this, So I'm worried that, um, you go that way, I'm worried that this, this if we can get you out of there. I'm worried that, uh, where should I go this way? Maybe I should. Um, I don't want to break that cable. I mean, it's three wires so I can replace it with something, but it would be nicer if I don't have to. Uh, really? Come on. This solder braid is usually pretty good. That seems to have gone. So, um, yeah, anyway. So, in this vehicle, when you hit a control, I think it tells a vacuum motor to move a vent um, rather than a direct cable to that unit. Um, this has worked out better on this vehicle than the previous because I've had no trouble with that part of the thing. Uh -huh. All right, here's what we're going to do. This is my usual my go to method when things don't like to cooperate. I have to get my dual screwdriver and we just help it along. So, um, and then, I 
can we? That is. How about you? Maybe. Just wait a little bit. All right. Yeah. Okay. That is. Well, I have to persuade it, I guess. A little heat. <sighs> I do have a uh, uh, vacuum uh, soldering iron, but it doesn't seem to be cooperating right now, and I don't want to fix it right now. So. This is what we're doing. Come on. Just be loose now. Let go. There it is. So I gotta remember that this goes like this. Shouldn't be too hard. Alright, now. Now now let's see here. Um I am going to I think. you over here. All right, well, there are things I do use this for, but not very often. Um, and I, I have it because I do occasionally need it. Um, let's see. Okay, now, let's see what we can do to try to get this free. And oh, it's uh, I'm probably pushing my luck, but right now this switch does not work. And the uh, thing that leads me to believe that this is my problem, child, is that if I look at that, sucking all that in, um, if I play around with the switch, I can get the relay for the, the rear position to function. And sometimes, occasionally, uh, low speed will turn on. Um, I tried, I've got the uh, circuit diagram from uh, Haynes, and one of the things I've discovered about automotive manufacturers is that they always come up with creative ways of doing things. And so, when I look at them and I expect certain things to be done a certain way, well, they almost never do it that way. I think their big deal is always, how can we do this? the most economical way, which really isn't a bad thing, because if they can do better with the economy uh, of scale, or, or yeah, if they can economize in their building without reducing quality, then that's all to the good for us, the consumer. But uh, um, but um, it can definitely get creative when it gets to wiring circuits up. Um, of course, you you actually, if you read schematics for radio, sometimes you'll run into some similar things. They, you know, on the schematic, they've got a couple of components that are connected in different locations on the schematic. And then you find out in the radio, they're tied together right next to each other. Because it was more convenient or less expensive or whatever, um, 
So it definitely gets interesting. All right, now, I don't know. Is this going to come if I try to persuade you? Uh, let's see. Take a look here. All right, so I'm hoping... I'm actually going to go down to the metal part there. So I'm hoping I can persuade this to lift up. Um, all right. I felt that give. Good. And that's loose. That looks good. Um, that side is free. Let's see if we can get this side free. Alright. There we go. So that's free. Can we start persuading you to come? Pretty nice. Trying to be gentle so that I don't damage anything. Um, I don't know, not seeing, having seen inside the switch, I don't know what's going to be affected by excessive force. Don't want to find out, really. Okay, so that one is not cooperating. Okay. Take a look. So I think I see. Uh, uh, okay. Well, we may have to persuade some of the other parts to come. That's free. That's free. Let's see if we can get you to come loose. Thought this was loose. You notice I'm not left handed. Left hand does not want to cooperate. Man. Come on, I go. Let's go. Come on. Well, being very uncooperative. Hope you know that. Okay. Now. Oh. Oh, that's kind of scary. They've got this folded all the way over. Uh, huh. Well, that does not excite me. Um, and the other thing I'm wondering is positioning. Um, up before I put this back together, but, um, okay. Um, Alright, so push is on the bottom, that tells me my orientation, so the key question here is, does this have a um, particular orientation? Alright, so I got, I've got this all the way over to this corner, and I'm going to put a black mark on that. Alright, so I've just put a little black mark there, just because I don't know what's going to happen when I take this apart. Um, Alright, 
that's where that goes. Let's see. I hate bending things that much. This is a very risk, very real risk of it breaking. But they give me no, ch no choice. All right. Okay. Well, all right. Let's. Uh, All right, well, this is what's inside here. And I may have just lost my orientation. Um, uh, That part looks good. I'm not sure about this. Um, let's, let's see if we can. Uh, okay. Well, I can't tell what's going on there. Uh, it just doesn't. It just doesn't really seem to show me much. This definitely looks like uh, something that does digital signaling. Um, it's not your typical switch, that's for sure. Um, okay, so the way they've got this designed is you can't you can't get this together wrong. So as long as you get the orientation correct, um, so I've got that mark on here, which I, I'm so glad I did, because now I know how to put this back together. So. Um, this does not look encouraging to me. Um, so I don't, I don't exactly know. Because here's what here's what's interesting to the to me about this. In fact, let me just find out something. Um, in fact, I'm going to, I can move you back over here. So I want to go um, back to my workspace where I don't have to turn sideways to do things. So, bear with me. Okay, me. and so, so here's what we're going to do. Um, I'm going to use my auto-ranging meter, just because it's more convenient. I use my Beckman most of the time. You know, I, I just, I like it for a number of reasons, but it's not it sometimes is a, it's definitely is easier to go with an auto ranging meter. But with the Beckman, I have to pay attention to where I'm setting things, and that's not a bad thing because I kind of like that. Um, paying attention to, uh, um, it makes me pay attention to what I'm doing, and hopefully it means I will make fewer mistakes. Unfortunately, that is not a guarantee. But anyway, that's another issue. Arch from this one. All right, so I'm getting light on this. All right, so so what I want to know is 
What's going on in there? Because I don't really know. Okay. Um. No. I gotta tilt that up more. That's one problem with that. I'm gonna have to make another stand for this. And it's got the little leg on the back, which is nice, but for whatever reason, uh, when you're turning the video, it uh, it's hard to see. All right, well, let's see. So here we are. I've got this leg connected to my meter. And if I go here... And I go so that is resistance material so if I go here let's see what this does um, nothing interesting How about this one Oh, that's the center pin. Okay. So what I'm, I'm just moving my the tip of my probe around here. Now this is an older meter, so it's a bit slow sometimes responding. That's one of the things I don't like <coughs> with an auto ranging meter. Okay, so then, oh, no, not that. So, this is very interesting. Oh, I think my problem might be here. All right, so this is behaving like a volume control, um, and I'm not in focus, am I? All right, here we are. All right, so this is behaving like a volume control. This is this pin in the center should be reading yeah, 0.4 or whatever. The meter isn't accurately zeroed, unfortunately. So if I go here, I'm going to go right down to this part right here. What do we have? Six, four point three. I think my problem is right here. Yeah, I don't think it's supposed to be uh, doing what it's doing. I think it's worn out. Hmm. Yeah, that looks less than great. Um, hmm. Let's see. Huh. There's probably no way. I'm going to flex those pins out a little bit. Um, I'm going to hit that again with cleaner. And we'll put this in here. Alright, so what I want to do, that's basically a volume control from the looks of things. So, let's treat it like one. Um, So this is a digital control. Um, I think the control may be worn out, but let's see. All right, so I've got a connection to the center. Whoops, a connection to the center pin and one to that side. And let's see what we have. Okay. 
Okay. Well, that's working. Let's see. I want to try this with... I do have my analog right there. All right. Let's try something. I do use analog meters on occasion. I grew up with analog meters. So when I was first got involved in this hobby, oh, good night. Um, I'm kind of afraid to say how long ago that was. Um, <laughs> well, um, yikes. Uh, I just happened to think. I used to watch my dad work on electronics when I was 12. 56 years ago. Back then, back then there was no such thing as a digital meter. They just didn't exist. Um, and that's not going to work, is it? Uh, let's see, maybe we should get this away from there. Put this here. I'm going to move it back a little bit so I can put... Um, all right, and I'm going to zoom out a little bit, perhaps. Yeah, all right. So here's what I'm going to do is, now, I'm doing this because analog meters respond faster to changes than um, So you notice, I mean, this is this has a dampened movement, so it it does have a little bit of lag, but you can see. I'm just tapping my my meter probes together. You can see that it it responds fairly quickly. So I'm hoping that this will tell me when that uh, center connection is dropping out. Um, of course, you know, I'm doing all this without really knowing for sure that this is my problem. Um, I, I guess I should have realized that um, all right, so we gotta go let's see here. All right, R times ten. Yeah, we gotta go up higher. So let's short this out and zero it. So one of the things about um, oh, okay, there we go. Got to zero you out again. One of the th problems with digital or analog meters is that you spend a lot of time keeping them, <laughs> keeping them zeroed. There we go. All right, so. Now, uh, let's see what we got. That looks nice and smooth. All right, let's go to, whoops, that one decided to disconnect on me. Fine, be that way. Let's try it that way. I don't expect there's going to be anything different there, but... It seems like it's working. And it looks like <coughs> that's about 3k ohms. And uh, it's down around, yeah, maybe, let's see, um, okay, yes. So let's see, so if this is 3K, 
500. There's 100, so we're down around maybe 10, 20 ohms. I don't see anything wrong with that. At least not now. Was there before? I don't know because I was foolish enough to not check it. Of course, I didn't know that I was dealing with one of these. All right, so I'm going to put this back together. And um, now, if I'm right, there's my black mark. There's my, oops, there. So this should be, come on, come on, well, oh, it's got, uh, that's right. Let's, now this also does have uh, detents. Okay, there it is. So we are there, that's right. So this has detents on it. I was expecting to just rotate it like a regular volume control, and no, that's not an option. Okay, so I folded that in. Um, and we've got this one. I'm not sure why they have that little skinny one there, but hey, whatever. All right, so okay, so there's my black mark. There's my my mark there. Just for the fun of it, um, well, we'll just do a final check here. But also, I'm curious to see what the ohms range is on my digital meter. I, I'm amazed that this is all done with just resistance. Okay, well, let's do, let's bring my other meter back. But anyway, so for those of you who don't know that analog meters may have a use, one of the things I really like using one of these for is when I have a, a micro switch. Or any switch, I suppose. But I've used it most often with micro switches to see yeah, if they're behaving properly, because you, when you're hitting the button on a micro switch, sometimes um, as the button is going in, you'll see the switch drop out and in, out and in, and that tells you that the switch is not healthy. We're going to have to clean this up, um, and then put it back together. Do I think this is going to work? Don't know. I have no clue, because I made a mis I, I made a mistake by taking it apart and not, because I could have found out what was going on to a degree, depending on how badly it was misbehaving. I could have found out what was going on by using a meter, and I didn't do that. So, um, so that's a reminder, I guess, for the future. Do a little checking before you take things apart. And um, it will serve you well if you do. Someday, before I'm dead, I hope I remember that. Um, Alright, so we have to go this way. So... I did manage to uh, get those pins a little bit cockeyed. Darn it. Uh, let's clean this up a bit. Okay. And it looks pretty good.
Okay, so the middle one doesn't want to cooperate. Fine. The middle one gave me lots of trouble before, and it's still doing so. Be that way. All right. Uh, come on. If all else fails, i got another trick up my sleeve. That looks good. But that pin just doesn't want to go in. Um, so, yeah, it seems to have persuaded it. And still have too much solder on that one. Fine. Um, why? Just because you can. Oh, it's also bent out a little bit. Maybe that's what's wrong. Um, yeah, so... It definitely does not want to go either. I think it's got too much solder on it. Um, all right, let's do this. Can we get you to go? <laughs> Whoa. The slightest bit of heat, and away it went. Um, Yeah, just a little bit of heat and takes care of the problem. All right. Um, okay, let's solder this together, and then we'll put it back together. Then I go find out if I did anything or not. This was a fair amount of work. I'm hoping it had some benefit. Good. One of the last things I want to do is give myself a, a bad solder joint. Um, is, uh, let's see here. Okay. Yeah, so, um, I, I was really surprised, a little bit surprised, when I took my a radio from my car. I swapped out radios, actually, because one of them was badly misbehaving. I had, uh, oh, I don't need to put that away yet. Um, um, I found out that that is all digital, too. I guess I shouldn't have been surprised, because that's how they get the... Uh, give you the ability to have um, the controls on the uh, steering wheel operate the volume, while well, you can also operate the volume on the radio and of course the nice thing about using digital stuff is that um, if you had a mechanical control on the radio you'd have a problem you just, you couldn't do what you what they do um, you just simply couldn't do what they are able to do by using the digital controls uh, because uh, 
a mechanical volume control is, is going to simply say, I want this volume. And that's all you're getting. And you can't change it elsewhere because I got control. Um, all right. So, uh, so it's, it's pretty neat. I mean, there's. So those of you, by the way, if you've had your radio suddenly go blasting up in volume, the reason for that is that the. Um, little fingers inside that volume control, which look a lot like this, by the way. Well, actually, no, I take that back. They don't. They actually have... Boy, can I explain this? Um, <sighs> there are two little fingers on the rotary part of the control, if I remember right. And then there are a bunch of little fingers inside the unit, and as you rotate it, those fingers contact different those different outer co contacts and um, it's a rather unique setup and I'm not sure I could explain it, how it works up well I know I can't because I, I know the computer the control the computer uh, in the radio's control is, is seeing what those contacts are doing and it's able to determine where it is because of um, the, the position of the uh, contacts. When you rotate the contacts or the knob, one set of contacts hits another set of contacts first. So the contact on the left, if that hits it first, the, the computer knows you're turning it down. If the one on the right hits first, then it knows that you're turning it up. It, at least that's my understanding. Do not take that to the bank, because <laughs> um, I'm pretty sure that's not all that's going on, and I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm also probably not explaining that very well. But um, well, this one's going to be uncooperative, just like the other one, isn't it? Uh, come on. That looks pretty clean. So why for are you not cooperating? Alright, so this has to go that away. So it would be really annoying to finally get these all in there where I want them and have them be in the records upside down or whatever. So I'm trying to avoid that if I can. Uh let's see here. Um Let's go. It's really not. Uh, oh, 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 oh. I think I got it. So, can I do this without losing it? I think we can. Ah! My digit slipped. Did I lose it? No, thankfully not. My solder is a little slippery, or my fingers are, one of the two. And um, I did exactly what I don't want to do, which is drop a heavy roll of solder on my circuit board. i got to be more aware of that one. I think that's the first time I've ever done that. Okay. That looks pretty promising. That goes there. This comes off. Um... One of the interesting things, these these uh, these nuts that go on these, every single one of them was loose. Of course, my van is a 2004, kind of vintage in its own right, and um, it's got 180 plus thousand miles on it. Although um, I like to watch uh, Westwork Channel, and he recently had a vehicle, a Chevy, I think. Shocked me to no end when he said the odometer was 400 and some odd thousand miles. 
I didn't think that uh, <laughs> modern Chevys would do that. And you know, in case you think I'm a Chevy hater, I grew up with Chevys. That's all my dad would drive. And uh, I, you know, I don't have anything uh, anything against Chevys at all. Um, I don't drive one right now because I think the uh, the Toyotas are are more reliable. But apparently, GM can build some decent vehicles that will go a very long time. I think that was a 2005 pickup, I think. Um, and, and given how many miles it had on it, it didn't have that many problems, so I was rather impressed. Um, and just so you know, I mean, I would be much happier if American companies would make products that people want to buy because they're reliable. Um, that would make me happy, actually. All right, so um, so now, let's see. Uh, come on. There we go. Get in there. No. You're not going to get in there? Why? Why are you not going? Ah, let's see. Does that one go? That one does. That one does. You're only you're the only holdout. Come on. Cooperate. Probably isn't going in there squarely enough or something. In. Well, not quite. Um, why are you not? Huh. I don't know why that's not being nice to me. It's just not cooperating at all. Let's see. What did I do with my hook? Uh, somewhere around. Aha. Does anybody misplace things at the rate that I do? <laughs> you keep thinking, well, I know that was here. Then you go looking for where you expect it to be, and it's not. Um, all right. Let's see. See if we can drive this up, drive that in. Is there a, there must be a pin or something. Yes, there is. So the pin is not going where I want it to. Why are you not? I don't know. Let's see. Because I took the because I bent these wires, it's not automatically aligning. So, uh, actually, I guess I'm gonna pull this out and take a look because I have a feeling that pin is bent, and I didn't look for something like that. So, let's push out from behind. I think that works better. There's that one, and there's that one. Let's take a look. It's possible when I put it in the vise that I bent that pin. Very possible. Yep. That's what it is. See that pin should be up. And that one is not. My vise got it. There's always some. There's always something you don't look at, don't think to look at, and uh, this is what causes you grief. All right, now this goes this way. Let's see if we can get you to go together. All right. Usually the battery 
alarm will go off and tell me that I'm running out of battery. Usually I run this thing when it's plugged in, but because I moved it from one spot to another, I didn't plug it in. And I didn't realize uh, that I'd run it long enough to kill the battery. Okay, so this actually it seems to have gone in where I wanted it to go. Um, I think everything looks good. What's nice, what's really nice about modern technology is that I think these are all LEDs. I can't imagine it would be a lot of fun to buy and already know how much fun it is. Although, I must, actually I must confess that it's not as bad to take this out of the car as I thought it might be. Um, oh, 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 oh. I just remembered something though. And that is this cable. This cable has to go there, and there's just no no chance of me going there. So so I just shoved that out. I'm gonna take this out. Is there a lock? Yes. There's a there's a little lock that you have to slide up, and then this cable comes out. Which is probably was this one locked? Yes. All right. So we're going to secure you, and then, um, let's see, all right. I'm really hoping I'm really hoping this works. It'd be nice if all it was was a dirty control. But hard to say. Uh-huh. Does this screwdriver fit? Right. Phillips? Oh it does. I really don't want this circuit board flopping around in here. Okay, well, let's see. Alright, so we got this. Yep. There's that. Now the fun thing is I gotta get you up through here. Yes. There it goes. All right. Get this lock up. One of the things you got to make sure about on these ribbon cables is that they go in all the way. If you don't, something's not going to work. Sometimes, it, oh, yes, all right, like I just did. If you look on the back of these, you can see whether they're in all the way. Some of them have a nice little line across the front that tells you that you've arrived. And I guess actually maybe this is sort of that, you know. Okay. So I'm looking at the back and the light shines through this and I can see I can see along the top of this where the white material ends and the actual wires begin. And I can tell that that white edge is even with the top of this connector. Which tells me that the um, cable is in all the way. All right. That was kind of nice of them to put this little visual thing in there so you can see um, that that cable is there. Alright, so next we have to put this together and then 
I get to put my van back together and see if this actually functions. I'll be honest, I don't have high hopes for this. Um, and I'm not really inclined to um, take my camera out there and film all that. Uh, it would take it's a fair amount of time involved. So um, I'll probably come back and just say, yep, it worked, or no, it didn't. Um, and I'm operating it because I have a feeling you could put this this way or this way. And it would really annoy me if I put it on backward. Of course, it may have little nubs that keep you from doing that. But if I get it right the first shot, all the better. Oh, I have screws left over. Because I have to secure this. All right. So, at this point, I'm going to... Uh, Does this, does, does this, it, I guess someone was explaining how, now you've got Phillips 1 and 2 and 3, um, but someone was mentioning that, you know, they aren't always all uh, exactly the same. I don't know if there's a, a metric version or, I don't know, but I've run into problems where it seemed like it wasn't exactly, it didn't seem to be exactly a uh, number two Phillips, and it didn't seem to be actually a number one, so I don't know. All right, it's all back together. I'm hoping it works. We shall see. Well, <laughs> I put this back in my car, and it did not work. In fact, it worked less well than it did before I touched it. So, the first thing that ran through my mind was, um, why? So, after a little bit of thought, I said, well, I'm pretty sure I got this soldered together correctly, but let's just do a quick check. So I measured from here to here, from here to here. And between here and here, I got a different resistance reading than I got from here to here. I said, what? So I measured from here to here. This wire was open. Uh, I cut this out of that uh, ribbon cable. And then when I pulled on it, it pulled apart. Remember I said the, the uh, nuts were loose on these? I think this thing was moving back and forth and it would make connection when it felt like and it would make connection and then it wouldn't make connection. When I took it apart, I of course stressed this pretty heavily, so I pulled the broken part completely apart, which meant that there wasn't even the slightest chance that this was ever going to make a connection. So what did I learn? Number one. When you see that fasteners are loosened, or are loose, check your wiring. I, this is probably all I really needed to do to fix this, but well, I'll find out shortly. But um, All I had to do is find the broken wire. Like I said, I, I, had, I took this control out. I, I realized after the fact that I could take this control out by just unsoldering these three wires, and it would just come right out after I unsnapped it, of course. So um, I did that cut this piece of wire out of this three ribbon cable, check that this wire is testing fine now. Uh, it was just one spot where it broke underneath, of course, right in there. So, um, so I didn't, well, I don't, I don't know with this paper co covering on here, I might not have seen that it was broken anyway. So I think this might have been my problem because it was very intermittent. It would sometimes work. And when I was playing with the control, if I moved it one way or another, it would sort of work. Sometimes it would actually work, and other times it wouldn't. And that that led me to think that this control was, was faulty. 
when in fact, so I probably didn't need to pull this apart and clean it. All I really need to do is repair that wire. So, like I said, I'm going to put this back in my van and we'll find out. But uh, I'm reasonably confident that was my issue based on how it was behaving. Because if I hit a bump, sometimes it would turn off or it would turn on, depending on the bump. So that wire was just barely making connection. And so, and uh, as I, you know, um, I was puzzled as to why this this control would have gone bad. You know, all this stuff on here, I just cleaned this off too. Um, I was puzzled as to why this switch would go bad. Now I know on my radios the contacts in the on, on the volume control would go would get corroded, but this is more like a volume control. And yes, those do the same thing, but they don't behave like this. Um, not quite. So I think, I think this is my problem. So I'm going to put this back together again, and we'll see. And I will let you know. Well, I'm wrapping this up with um, mixed feelings. Uh, the, the broken wire was my problem, and fixing that made everything work again. So why do I have mixed feelings? Well, I overlooked a couple of, of uh, clues that could have led me to the problem a whole lot faster. When I noticed that the nuts that held those controls in place were loose, I know what happens when, when the uh, controls are just allowed to float like that and they're allowed to work on the wires that are attached to them. Unfortunately, that never crossed my mind. So all the trouble I went through of taking it completely apart, of cleaning the control, which isn't going to hurt some, anything, but at the same time, I spent a whole lot more time on this than I really needed to, unfortunately. But on the plus side, that did fix the problem. And uh, I avoided having to buy a replacement control panel because that I, that was where the problem was um, so that's all to the plus the parts that you didn't see was me checking things out uh, checking relays and all sorts of things trying to figure out what the heck was going on my gut instinct said there was something wrong with the switch that's, and when I was playing with it just before I took it out it behaved like a bad switch, like there was something flaky, like a bad contact or something like that. Um, so, hindsight, they say, is a wonderful thing, and it is. But I'm trying to think, I'm trying to, I'm kind of wondering if I could have done a better job of troubleshooting this if I stopped to think, okay, it, it's intermittent, and I can move the switch, and it sometimes works. And then when I took the switch apart, it still didn't dawn on me that that switch was not the type of switch that would um, behave intermittently like that. Not the way it was behaving when I was playing with it. So, there are a number of things that I just didn't see until after the fact. In fact, when I had it here on the bench and I discovered the wire was broken, the first thing that crossed my mind was, oh, you're so careful, you unsoldered that and you broke it anyway, and then the thought crossed my mind, finally. Oh. It was like a light bulb went on over my head rather dimly, fortunately. Oh, I bet this was the problem all along. And sure enough. Once I repaired that wire, put it back together, everything works the way it used to, and the way it's supposed to. So, the thing that's, crossed, that's running through my mind right now is, how do I avoid making the same mistake in the future? I don't know exactly. But one thing, one thing I, I well, one of the things I found prey to was my assumption. My assumption was the switch is bad. And that's what I went for. And, and I guess it's an obvious thing to do. That's what it looked like was going on there. But once I discovered that, this, and, and the other problem I made was not checking the switch out in advance of me taking it apart. Because by not doing that, 
I have no, had no way of knowing whether or not the um, switch was behaving properly before I even worked on it. That was a mistake. Hopefully I can remember that mistake and, and not repeat it. Um, it's, it's something I, I don't normally do, but in my mind, that switch was a mechanical switch with contacts inside it, and that all I needed to do was take it apart and clean it. When I saw that it was a three-wire switch, I should have stopped right then and there and investigated. It would have been a smart thing to do. Put my meter on it, operate the control, see what I was dealing with, treat it like a black box as though I don't even know what's in there, and test it and see what it can tell me before I even get into it. Um, would I still have found that broken wire right away? No, no clue. I'd like to think I could or would, but um, I'm thankful that I found it. Um, and if this is another one of those things where I got into it not knowing, okay, will I get anywhere with this? Will this fix my problem? Um, could I make things worse? All those things ran through my head. That Well, number one, it's not working, so I can't make it worse. And number two, what if I do find the problem? It avoids me having to pay for a new module uh, if it turns out that's the issue. So, uh, and when I oh, when I walked back out there and put that thing in there and it didn't work at all, I was very discouraged, of course. And then part of me said, "Okay, what did you do wrong?" But then I dug out my meter and then I discovered that I wasn't getting the same readings on the circuit board that I was on the switch. And that, of course, led me to finding the broken wire. So, I guess my encouragement is it's not unusual to feel discouraged when you've tried something and it doesn't work. But don't stop there. Um, think about what, you're, what you've done. Think about possible issues that could be causing the problem you're seeing. And then see if you can come up with a solution. It worked for me this time. It has worked for me in the past. Um, when I've gone down the wrong trail, uh, and I've discovered, okay, my first, my first thought about this was wrong. So now that I've discovered that I've gone down the wrong trail and my idea was wrong, what are my other options? What are the other possible problems? And that has served me in good stead in the past. So. I guess that's the thing I would like to pass on to you, is if you miss it the first time around, that doesn't mean that you that you don't have that there isn't a solution that you can't find the solution, and so even though I'm a little bit disappointed myself in in my diagnostic skills, <laughs> um, I'm happy that I ultimately did get to the right solution and it's working. I didn't have to buy anything. Well, it cost me some time and a little bit of solder. <laughs> so, anyway, so if you watched this far, I, I thank you and hope uh, to see you in the next video.